Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to do a tutorial, a fluid pour, but I'm going to incorporate it into fashion illustration. And today I've chosen to paint Hayley Bieber. And the picture I'm going to use, I'll insert it now so you guys can see. Um, but that is the picture I'm going to use as a reference image today. I just really like the silhouette. I'm looking more at the silhouette rather than any patterns or designs. And then for her dress, I'm kind of going to do a fluid pour and just see how that works. Right, what I'm going to start by doing, so this is a canvas. And what I'm going to do is instead of priming it, because I just want, I want the background colour to be a sort of matte blue. So I've got this big tub of blue paint here but I don't want it this dark so I'm actually going to mix it with some white primer and that I'm just going to do that as the background first so I'm going to apply it with a roller just because it's way easier blob a lot and I'm just going to get that all over the canvas Okay, sorry, lighting has changed. It has gone dark here. So hopefully this is still okay for you guys. So I've done two coats of the blue and I've just let it dry. And I'm actually going to do my painting um, portrait. So I'm gonna do it this way around. And what I wanna do is start by having her face kind of up here and then it goes down into like a fluid pour down here. So I'm gonna just get a pencil and just slowly mark out her figure. If you have trouble marking out sort of figures and, and getting the proportions right, I actually have a tutorial on how to trace onto canvas. So I'll put that on the screen now. But otherwise I'm just gonna freehand draw it. Okay, so now I've got my rough image. I'm not quite sure if you can see on there, but I've got my rough sketch here. I'm actually going to cover any of the bits that I'm not gonna fluid pour on with gesso. So I, I'm only using gesso because it's really liquidy, this one, and it's easy. So I'm going to use some of that. And the reason I'm doing this is just because I'm going to paint her face and her arms and her legs in the colour of her skin tone and if I go straight onto a blue, the skin tone is going to come out very blue. So I just want to pick up the colour slightly. That's why I'm just going to go in with the white and just cover any part, like I said, that is not going to be fluid pour. Okay, so I've done the rough shape there of the skin tone parts. And I'm going to zoom in and just show you how I kind of get the skin tone right. And what I'm going to do next is I've got this kind of filling blade that I actually use as a palette. I just find it easier. So I've started putting some colours on here for the skin tone. Sorry, ignore my fingers. They are covered in blue paint. So I'm going to start mixing some, some colours together to get the kind of skin tone that I want. And if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to. You can almost just leave it as a white or black silhouette. It's totally up to you. And the way I think I'm going to do it is just lay down like the colours on top of each other. So kind of do a layering technique. So this is almost like the base layer and then we're going to add shadows and highlights in a minute. So now I'm going to start to add the highlights. So I've got the same colours here, but I'm also going to add some white to it. And we're going to just try and get a slightly lighter version of the colour that we just had. And that's going to kind of create some of the highlights. And I'm just going to kind of place those in areas where... Her skin is slightly lighter. So as you can see, I'm slowly starting to build up the tone. 
so I've put down like where I see the lighter tones and now I'm going to put down where I see the darker tones and all I'm going to do is just add a bit of brown to this gorgeous colour I've got here. We're not going into detail yet, we're just doing the highlights and lowlights. So anywhere where you kind of see a darker colour, start to pop that down. And if you think it's too dark, then I'm just I'm gonna pop a bit over there. Just add a little bit of white to it, so it's kind of like maybe an in-between color. So I think I've got like most of the skin tone down, and now I'm gonna start doing detail. I'm going to use a thin brush and um, start to get these kind of darker colours. Okay guys, so I finished painting the face and the skin and I've just done it roughly um, I've done it in a quick kind of abstract way and I quite like the way it looks and I've left um, the dress so that's what we're going to look at now so to start with the method I'm going to do is use masking tape and also masking fluid so I'm going to cover the sections of her that I don't want fluid on. I mean obviously I'm going to be as careful as I can but there's always the possibility that it could seep into other areas which is why we're going to use masking fluid as well. So with the masking tape I've just got normal masking tape here and I'm going to use that to roughly go around the edge and then we'll use masking fluid to fill in the rest. So just kind of grab sections of it start to go as close as you can to the edge of where I'm going to have my dress and obviously at this point you want to make sure that the um, painting is completely dry I would leave it even a day to dry before you do this next part Okay, so I have put masking tape around the whole edge of my painting. So it's covering the main parts, but obviously there are parts that are still showing. So I'm going to need to use masking fluid to kind of go over it. So this is the one I've got. It's mainly used for watercolour, but you can use it with acrylics. This one is Windsor and Newton. I'll link everything in the description below. So just make sure you stir the bottle. If, it's, if you've not used it in a while. Try not to shake it. If you need to thin it down, you can add water to it, but I prefer not to, especially when using acrylic. So I'm just gonna pour some in the lid here. And then what I'm going to use is I've got this silicone brush, and these are really good for when you're using masking fluid because it doesn't kind of gunk it up and you can easily peel it off. Whereas with brushes, it hardens the brushes quite quickly and it's difficult to get off. So this is what a colour shaper looks like and it's just made of silicone so it's kind of bendy. Okay so I'm going to start by painting over sections that I want that I don't want the paint on and I'm gonna make sure I go over the masking tape as well because that kind of gives it an extra layer of protection and then it also means it should peel off nicely with the masking tape. Just wanted to say that I went over everything with the masking fluid. I actually also went over some of the kind of lines of the masking tape just to kind of give it that extra protection just in case the paint does kind of seep into any gaps there. So that's like a double protection sort of thing. And I've also let it just dry naturally because if you use heat, um, like a hairdryer or something, it actually makes it really difficult to peel off the masking fluid. 
And now I'm going to go in um, with the fluid art and we're going to make some really cool patterns. So the colours I'm going to go with, I sort of wanted to go with like the pink that's in her hair. So I've got some pink here um, and also a, a little bit of purple and then a darker colour just to kind of balance it out I suppose and maybe a tiny bit of blue and a little bit of white. So what I'm going to do is pour a little bit into cups. So you don't need much because actually it's not really a large area to cover. So I would say like a teaspoon's worth in each cup. So I've got my four colours in these pots here. And next I'm going to add some paint conditioner. So this is basically a form of thinner for the paint because we want it to flow like liquid. So you can either use pouring medium or I use paint conditioner just because it's slightly cheaper. So you want to pour in maybe like three or four tablespoons worth into each one. And obviously stir it really well. And what I'm going to do next is I've got isopropyl here and I'm going to pour in a very small bit of isopropyl. Maybe like a teaspoon, between half a teaspoon and a teaspoon's worth and that will start to make it a bit more liquidy. So I'm going to do that in each paint pot and that is going to create some really cool patterns. And finally I'm going to use a bit of silicone oil and this is also going to help create patterns. And I'm just going to like spray for a few seconds inside and that's all you need, you don't need much. So this is the sort of consistency we're looking at. Falls off the stick a lot easier and it's just a lot more liquidy. Okay, this is the fun bit. So I've got a large cup here and this is what we're gonna pour all of these into and create this nice fluid art piece. So I'm going to start by putting white at the bottom. Just pour that in. Then I'm going to pop in probably my darkest colour, the blue. I don't want really too much of the blue. You can also already see like the patterns it's creating. I don't know if you can see that, but it's creating some really cool patterns already. So then I'll pop in maybe a lighter colour, put in some of the pink. And then I'm going to pour in some of the purple. Maybe some of the white again. And then maybe some of the blue. Just literally the tiniest stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour it. This is the scary part. I'm going to stop, start from the top and work my way down. So carefully I'm going to pop this on here. And I'm going to start to bring that down. I've got quite a bit left, so I'm going to leave that for now and just use what I've got, just in case I need more. So now I'm going to like tilt it and make sure you don't get it past the um, masking tape that you've put down. Okay, well I'm going to leave it like that. I'm quite happy with these patterns. Um, obviously I've got a mark here, great. I'm going to have to go over it. Um, but basically we're going to let it dry uh, overnight and then we're going to peel it off and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've left it to dry. I've left it actually two days. Um, this is just because of convenience. So I think after a day it should be okay, but Waiting a little bit longer always helps just because sometimes like especially if the fluid uh, gets underneath some of the masking tape it might still be wet under there and things like that. 
So now comes the fun part of peeling it off and hopefully revealing something that looks okay. So um, I'm just going to start to peel it off from the top. Okay, so I finished making my corrections and the last thing I'm going to do is actually, you might think it's crazy, but do a few splattered bits and I just feel like that will kind of make it look a bit more abstracty and it will also take away from the few corrections that I've needed to make. So this is what the painting looks like close up. So you've got all those really nice patterns from the fluid art in the dress. So I hope you all enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you all soon with a new video. Bye guys!